All right, everybody, uh, welcome to Norse Mythology. I'm really excited about this one um, because this is one that if you've been following the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe and particularly the Thor movies, uh, you're going to be a little bit more familiar with. Uh, and it's one that I didn't really have time for in my original kind of regular mythology course, and I was really excited to add it into the Honors Mythology course. So uh, without further ado, we're going to jump into the gods and goddesses that make up and the, the kind of worlds that make up the pantheon of Norse Mythology. So there are two distinct um, groups in Norse mythology. There's the Aesir and the Vanir. The Aesir are the ones that we're more familiar with, right? That's going to be Odin and Thor um, and Baldur and Loki and those kinds of things. Uh, and then the Vanir um, are kind of lesser known deities. There's not quite as much about them. Uh, they were more connected with like uh, agriculture and fertility, whereas the Aesir were more connected to power and war. Um, and then eventually uh, they end up merging together. The weird thing about Norse mythology is that it's not quite as linear as Greek mythology or as we would like it to be. Um, it's very, very old, obviously. So there's a lot of kind of conflicting stories and that kind of thing. So sometimes you'll notice that people have different names. Sometimes we'll notice that different things happen to them in different stories. A lot of times they're even contradictory. Uh, so that's something you just kind of have to be okay with when it comes to mythology is that it's not going to be this like nice linear story um, and that, you know, you're going to have some kind of conflicting information about these characters. So Norse mythology is, is split up into nine separate worlds. Um, there's Midgard, which uh, is kind of what it sounds like. It's right in the middle. This is where people dwelt. There's Asgard, which is where the Norse gods uh, lived and where most of the myths take place. There's Hell, that's the underworld. And then there's six other worlds um, that aren't super, super important in the major myths. Um, and we'll kind of get more into those when we're looking at the, the creation myth. We'll look at the, there's a very, very hot realm and there's a very, very cold realm. Uh, and we're going to take a look at those two as well. And kind of um, connecting all of these is uh, the world tree which all of the layers are kind of stacked up on top of this thing, and it and it kind of connects all of them together. So Valhalla uh, is in Asgard, and it is Odin's hall, right? So um, Norse mythology is coming during the kind of Anglo-Saxon tradition um, and, and kind of from the Viking tradition as well. So um, halls were, were very important. Mead halls were really, really important. This would be a place of power for a chief, um, and uh, often his warriors would stay there. So it makes sense that the, the Norse people would then kind of create that idea of heaven, right? If you have a chief that takes care of you on earth, then obviously you'd have a chief that takes care of you in heaven. Uh, you would stay in a similar place. It would just be much, much nicer, uh, and you'd have access to, you know, better beer and better mead and better food and women and that kind of thing. So uh, Valhalla was only for those that died gloriously in battle, right? Not cowards, not people who ran away scared while somebody, you know, stabbed him with a javelin in the back. These were people that died facing death um, and, and trying to, you know, do what they could for their chieftain. Um, basically, uh, and oddly enough, because the, the Norse were a pretty warlike people, is that Valhalla was another training ground and you were just preparing for another battle that would take place at the end of the world. I really apologize for that. Um, so, which is different than what we normally think of. Um, obviously, as heaven, we don't normally think of it as a place where uh, we're just getting ready for another battle, but that, you know, I think that tells you a little bit about the, the kind of Norse people and the Vikings in particular. So Odin is the chief god of the Aesir. Um, he's the god of wisdom, of war, of battle, and death, and, and magic, and a bunch of other things as well. Um, there weren't quite as many Norse gods as there were Greek gods, so they tended to all have kind of a lot of um, on their plate, basically. Though if you remember back to Greek mythology, and you think like to Apollo or, or um, uh, Hermes, they're gods of a lot of things. So this isn't that that much different. So um, Odin is often depicted as um, being one-eyed. He kind of wears an eye patch. Um, he gave up that eye for huge, huge amounts of wisdom. Um, he has this giant spear named Gugnir, uh, and he rode Sleipnir, which was an eight-legged horse, which I don't know, it doesn't seem much better than a four-legged horse, but um, maybe it was faster. It's definitely creepier, as you can see from the picture here. Um, he also had two ravens um, that are associated with him, and they would sit on his shoulders. And at the beginning of the day, every day, they would fly off in opposite directions uh, and circumnavigate the earth. 
um, and bring back lots and lots of information for Odin. So they would come back and they would tell him everything that they'd seen and heard. And that was one of the ways that he was um, seen as kind of very, very wise, but also like a little bit omnipotent uh, as kind of all knowing because he had access to all this information from his ravens. So um, Frigg, apart from <laughs> being a, a way of not cussing in front of your parents, uh, is Odin's wife. She's the patron of marriage, of motherhood and fertility. Again, this is very similar to the Greek pantheon where we have Zeus as like head god and he's powerful and he's warlike. Uh, and then his wife is the patron of marriage, motherhood and fertility and what we see in Hera. Um, unlike Hera, Frigg has very, very little place in these myths. Um, she did have a chariot pulled by cats, which is interesting um, and um, odd to say the least. So Thor is um, Odin's son. He's the, probably the one that we're going to be most familiar with, um, except for the fact, so he's, you know, I think he probably looked a lot like Chris Hemsworth, minus the fact that he's red haired. Uh, he's the god of thunder, lightning, wind, rain, and war. Um, he had a specially crafted hammer called Mjolnir, which you're familiar with if you've watched any of those movies, uh, and it was crafted by these dwarves of Asgard. Um, he was very, very strong, very, very uh, powerful, very, very impressive, um, kind of a bit more of a butt than how Thor is depicted in the um, in the movies. But generally, the Asgardian uh, gods, the 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 Aesir, are not pleasant. Um, they're they're very warlike. They're very vengeful, uh, and you know they're just not the kind of people you really want to hang out with. So Sif is um, Thor's wife. As you can tell, she's lovely. She's, um, you know, has this kind of beautiful long blonde hair. She's very um, feminine and things like that. She's Thor's wife and she's a fertility goddess. Again, she doesn't really show up too much in these myths. Um, sorry, ladies, the girls don't show up very much in general. Just, you know, one of those things. So Tyr is an interesting one. He's the god of single combat. Um, and heroic glory, right? So, you know, he's uh, the kind of people or the kind of person that people would pray to on a, on a battlefield, right? Um, especially, you know, if you're going to die, Tyr's the one that you want uh, with you. So he ends up binding the wolf god Fenrir, who we're going to hear about a little bit more about later, um, which was supposed to be kind of un, unbindable. Uh, he did lose a hand, as you can see right here, um, to the god Fenrir. Uh, he's very, very brave. Um, and he's kind of depicted as more human, I think, than than many of the other gods. Um, Tyr is also uh, where Tuesday comes from, right? So a lot of the days of the week are named after uh, the the Norse gods. Uh, Wednesday is actually Woden, which is another word for Odin. So that's Woden's day. Um, Tyr is Tuesday. Tyr's day is Tuesday. Thor's day is Thursday. Uh, and Frigg's day is Friday. Um, so yeah, fun fact that the days of the week are often associated with some, with some Norse gods. Sorry, that cut off on this last slide. Um, so this is a, a picture, um, a wood carving of uh, Tyr and Fenrir. So you can see Fenrir's legs here are bound um, and he's this kind of scary, slavering wolf monster. And you can see these uh, wings on Tyr's helmet. That's another way that he, is. that's like common to his iconography and how he's depicted. So Heimdall is the the guy that's played by Idris Elba in the the movies. He is he watches over the Bifrost Bridge, which connects all the realms of um, Midgard together, right? Um, so he can kind of unlock it and allow people to travel from it. He is a guardian of all the Asgard of, of all of Asgard. He keeps it safe. He makes sure that nobody comes in there that shouldn't. Uh, he can see perfectly, right? He has uh, this kind of insane vision for hundreds of miles. He doesn't need to sleep. And he has this big horn, as you can see, he's holding here in case there's any uh, danger approaching, right? Um, so that is kind of Heimdall's purpose, is a guardian of the realm of, of Asgard, but also of, of kind of all the nine realms. So Freyr is kind of the head of the Aesir gods. Um, he and his twin sister Freyja, who you're going to see in a second, um, were both um, uh, children of this like sea god, sea king. Um, Freyr is given Alfheim, which is one of the, the worlds. Um, it's the, called the Elf Realm, and he's the king of that. Um, he's very, very powerful. He uh, falls in love with this 
um, like Frost Maiden, these like frost giants, which we're going to hear about a little bit later. Um, and he was this kind of god of fertility. He was the, the kind of male version of that. As you can see, he's depicted with this boar. So this is actually a made boar. Um, it's made of like gold and it shines and it's made by the, the dwarfs of Asgard, uh, very similar to, um, uh, what's his face? Thor's uh, hammer. Uh, he also has a ship that he can, that it, like will always catch a favorable breeze. So it'll always go the direction that he wants it to. Um, and the ship can be like folded up and carried in a nice little pouch. Um, so he's, he's very important to the Vanir pantheon. So this is his twin sister Freya. Um, she's the goddess of love and fertility. She's really similar to kind of like an Aphrodite figure, but with a little bit more magic and focus on like the wilderness. Um, she's really, really beautiful. She's a patron of crops and childbirth in addition to love and fertility. Um, and it's there's a lot of discussion amongst scholars of Norse mythology about whether she and Frigg are actually the same goddess. Um, it's, it's possible that we see her more in kind of... Um, Scandinav like Scandinavian, like Sweden, uh, and then we see Frigg more in like Finland and Norway. Um, but uh, there's not really anything uh, super important about that. There are stories that involve both of them, but generally only one of them is involved. So it's possible that they're the same deity and they've just been kind of, um, you know, uh, there are like stories have just kind of split off. Because a lot of times, again, we're dealing with an oral tradition here. So uh, those things change constantly, just depending on who's telling it, what part of the world is that they're telling it in, that kind of thing. Um, but for our purposes, she is part of the um, Vanir, uh, and she is Freyr's twin sister. So um, Baldur, or Baldur, uh, is... Um, Odin's second son, he's Thor's little brother. He's uh, a god of innocence, of joy, of beauty, and peace. Uh, and part of that relates to his invulnerability. Um, so, you know, the fact that he can't be hurt, <laughs> I guess, generally, except for when it comes to mistletoe. Don't know why that's his, like, Achilles heel, but here we are. Um, he, uh, yeah, he, um, he's this kind of, like, shining example. He's very different if you've played the kind of most recent God of War um, from the Baldur that is depicted there, who's really angry and uh, tries to murder everybody. This one was a lot nicer. Um, so he has a brother, Hur, or, or um, Hood, uh, who we're going to read, we're going to see on the next slide, who accidentally kills him, right? He's blind, but he's a really great archer. Uh, and Loki tricks him into doing that. And we're going to hear all about Loki here in a minute. His death, um, begins the the kind of sets the wheels in motion for Ragnarok, which is the kind of end of the world, um, which features really, really heavily in Norse mythology. Like everything is kind of gearing up for that. So we'll see that in a minute. Um, so this is Hor or, or Hod. Uh, he's the god of winter and darkness. He's blind, as you can see in this picture, but he was an incredible archer. Um, and Loki tricks him into shooting Baldur, um, by like adding mistletoe to his weapon, which is the only thing that Baldur was um, potentially vulnerable to. We're going to hear more about that story once we kind of get into the meat of this uh, unit. So this is Vidar. He's one of Odin's sons. Um, he's the god of silence, the god of revenge. And his main purpose is that he is supposed to, during Ragnarok, everybody has very specific roles to play in Ragnarok, which we're going to learn a little bit more about later. But in Ragnarok, his job is to kill the wolf Fenrir um, as kind of revenge for what happens to uh, his father, Odin. So that's kind of his whole purpose is to, to kill Fenrir and survive the killing of Fenrir. Uh, so this is Uller. He is um, a god of winter. He's always dressed kind of in these jaunty animal furs, and you can see he's got his, uh, like, ice skates on. He's a patron of the Western Mountains, and he is Sif's, um, Thor's wife's son. He is not Thor's son, um, but he's Sif's son, so he's, he's uh, Thor is his stepdad. You know, it's kind of complicated <laughs> modern relationships here in North mythology. Uh, so these are the Valkyrie. They're goddesses of combat. Um, they're often depicted as very, very strong women, um, with sweet six packs, uh, that ride these horses into battle. And basically they would ride over the battlefield and see all of those that were slain gloriously in battle and they would choose them and send them to Valhalla. Um, the, another thing that I mentioned, I forgot to mention on Freya's page is that she gets half 
of everybody who dies gloriously in Valhalla. So half of them go to Odin and half of them go to her. So that's the other reason why they think that Freya and Frigg might actually be, might stem from the same goddess um, is because, you know, that, you know, since Frigg is, is married to Odin, it would make sense that she would get half the warriors in Valhalla. Um, so that's one of the other things that they think might link those two together. So as we've seen in, in kind of every type of mythology, there's always a, a trickster element. There's always a chaotic element. Um, and oftentimes we kind of see these two opposing forces, right? We see the, the forces of order and of, of culture and society, and then the forces of chaos and nature. And they're always kind of butting heads with each other. Um, there are six prominent ones that, that go against the gods kind of in general. The frost giants, the fire giants, Loki, and then the other th the other three are Loki's three children, who we're going to meet here in a second. Uh, so as you can see, they prettied Loki up a little bit for the uh, Marvel movies. Obviously, Tom Hiddleston's a, a much more appealing uh, person than who we have here. Um, he is Odin's brother. He's a god of mischief. He's a prankster. He is descended from a frost giant. Uh, and he has three children who are the greatest monsters in the known world. Prankster, though, is kind of like an odd name for what Loki does, considering he convinces people to, like, commit murder and he starts Ragnarok and things like that. I think Trickster is, like, a little gentle uh, for what Loki does. But, you know, what are you going to do? Uh, so here we can see Loki's brood. So Fenrir, um, the, the wolf that we saw with Tyr, is part of this. Jortzmendir, which is this... Um, giant snake and then hell which is the goddess of the underworld and i know if you've seen thor ragnarok um hell is a, a sister and this whole other thing and she's done from from odin they messed with that a little bit obviously to kind of make it a little bit better for the movies um in the norse kind of source material she is one of loki's children uh, so as we can see here, we have Fenrir. He's this enormous wolf. He can break any bonds except for the ones that Tyr made. And you can see, again, the ropes that Tyr made to, to bind the monster. That said, Tyr had to give up his hand in order to do so. So there's this kind of idea that it, everything's very even in Norse mythology, right? The forces of chaos and the forces of order. It's not good versus evil. That's very important to understand. Um, that they're always very much in balance. So we're going to see when we're going through Ragnarok how the kind of seesaw is constantly bringing itself back to equilibrium with who's killing who and that kind of thing. Very, very rarely does like one side actually come out as a winner in any way, shape, or form. Um, so this is uh, Jormungandr. He is this giant serpent. Um, and he is enormous, right? And he circles the entirety of the world because he's so big, and Thor really hates him. I don't really remember. I don't think there's even a given a reason as to why Thor hates the serpent so much, um, but, like, that's who he's going to tangle with when it comes to um, Ragnarok, toward the, to the end of the world. And then lastly, we have Hel. Um, and so her depiction even is something that shows us that like duality, the fact that, you know, good and evil and beauty and chaos and all of those things are kind of tightly linked together. Um, so Hel is female and half of her face is a beautiful woman and the other face is, uh, is a corpse. She is the ruler of Hel which is a place, I know it's kind of complicated, um, which is the kind of Viking underworld. And she has this giant hellhound named Garm, who is her companion, not to be confused with Fenrir, two completely different entities, right? Um, Fenrir is her brother, Garm is her puppy. Uh, and that kind of takes care of the pantheon for us. So make sure you take notes on this uh, so that you do well on your test that you're going to have on this. Best of luck, everybody.